It is Monday, May 4th. Um, probably can't hear it because I'm using a mic right now, but kind of breezy out. It feels like 20 mile an hour winds, but uh, all my apps and weather stuff says hardly any wind. So, but it's definitely a breeze uh, going on. You probably see that right behind me. There's uh, waves pushing over on the surf. But uh, we'll deal with that. I really don't like the wind. But uh, today, uh, halibut is open. So we're going to be doing some halibut fishing, hopefully. And halibut fishing is straight out there. Right off where uh, uh, this park is. So I probably shouldn't tell everybody that for uh, my spot. But I think I just did. Put this together right here for halibut. Uh, I just sharpened the hooks. These things do not come sharp. We're gonna put that about right there. Let's take the thread, wrap it around there a whole bunch of times. These baits will stay on for quite a while. Long enough to catch a halibut, that's for sure. Hopefully they're biting. Uh, last year we did the near shore. About three trips, lost interest. Not even a bite, just desolate. But usually, as you can see in some older, older videos, that uh, I do quite well catching a halibut on the near shore fishery which just opened up on the first. So this will be our first trip doing that. Usually uh, I just go out there, stop at my normal depth and uh, get action right away normally until last year happened. That was kind of a There we go. That'll work. Then, all you do is attach this little dude right here. Goes like that. Then, depending on the current, we will grab one of these weights and stick it right there. And that's about the extent of a halibut setup is just that, to that, to that, to that. So, we're gonna go do it. Well, I saw the um, restricted light for the bar crossing. Uh, it's restricted to 20 feet. So we're definitely good to go. So we're getting out of here. Let's bring up the trim a little bit. Seems like you're always forgetting something, but because uh, you are. But uh, this trip here, forgot my rain pants in my truck, which I guess I'll be fine. I probably got an extra pair on here and forgot, uh, oh, my insulated boots. So I do have a pair of junky ones that I keep on the boat too, so. Uh, I'm one of those guys that uh, have uh, everything and then I have everything for backup for most cases. As you can see, the bar is uh, non-existent it's just flat looks great so cruising at 5500 rpm 
at 37 miles an hour. So I know there's a lot of people that are interested in uh, Duckworth boats and offshore boats and aluminum boats. So you kind of want to know, uh, you know, a couple of people asked about traveling speed versus, you know, the seas and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'll try to do some updates on that, how fast I'm going, on how rough the seas are. It looks like there's a nice swell right in the middle of the bar up there. So today, instead of uh, shooting off south, we are going to be going north. Yeah, there's, a, there's some swells right here. There's a nice wave right over there, coming up towards the rocks. We'll stay away from that. And off we go. Okay, I'm gonna actually go over the app that I've talked about, the one I like to use. It's this one right here. Pretty cool little app, has a lot on it. Uh, first of all, right there, partly cloudy. Let me grab something to point with. Uh, temperature, barometer, falling, humidity, um, UV, onshore wind, offshore wind. Orange is okay, that turns red. It's not good at the time uh, incoming tide 90% coefficient that's the current and that would be um, I guess 120 or 110 I can't remember is the max 8.2 average swell seems uh, less than that and then 11.4 seconds apart so 11.4 seconds is the distance between the waves, so that's pretty good. When it shortens up, that means it's choppier. The cool thing about it, you can actually take the time and look ahead in the future, and boom, right there, 11.18 a.m., tide's going out, all the rest about the same, and then it shows fish activity. So it shows uh, fish activity should pick up around 11.18. Uh, uh, when the tide starts going out and this thing is actually pretty accurate um seems like uh you know i'll say the fish activity and then when it dies goes away you got about an hour after that and you're pretty much done at least what i've seen so far so we're we're kind of uh not looking too good for fish activity but we're gonna do it anyway Well, beautiful day. I guess the app was correct. Um, not much wind, not much waves, a little swell, wind chop. Awesome day. Lighthouse is right there. Pacific Shores RV Resort is right there, obviously. It's right off that lighthouse. Over there, is where we come in to you with your Quinnip Bay uh, bar entrance. Down that way is Depot Bay, and then further down is Lincoln City. Come on, fishy. Let's do this. We are out here near shore fishing. Uh, May 4th, 2020. I think I just had a bite. Come on, fishy. Let's do this. We need us some halibut. It's 
been a long time. Uh, no fish last year. This spot was desolate. No fish at all. But uh, that's not the normal. Normally I come right here, fish about 10 minutes, get some action, catch a halibut, bonk them on the head, shoot them with the shotgun, and uh, we call it good. But last year, that did not happen. But uh, we are definitely ready. We have the shotgun, the 410 shotgun already. We have the Glock 9mm, just in case the shotgun doesn't work. But uh, it always does. I use a little uh, 410 shotgun uh, for halibut fishing, a little single shot. It was like 120 bucks. Pretty cool. I did the single shot for safety reasons. So obviously you shoot a halibut, you don't want to drop a gun and then uh, have another shell or some bullet in there and have it uh, blow your leg off or something. So that's why we have the shotgun that we have. And the 410 does the job. You just shoot them right behind the eyeballs in that area. Um, instantly stops them and then um, actually bleeds them too so they're all good to go once you do that well we're gonna set that down for a second Let's see what's up we're 170 feet of water like some little stuff down there and uh, definitely watching for a crab pot so which I haven't seen for a while but there's some behind us okay we're out here uh, May 4th, 2020, first day of the nearshore halibut fishing. Going to do a little test run of the little uh, halibut tamer. And we're going to see what happens. Cock it. Bam! Oh, it still works. Well, electric reel's nice, so you just crank right on up, then when it gets uh, probably within four feet of the boat, it'll stop. 4.8 meters, it stops. And you reel it up the rest of the way. Well, left that spot. Uh, getting a little deeper the current was a little stronger it was harder to stay on the bottom so I'm gonna try to go shallow to see what happens so we're zipping in towards shore because the drift is running west northwest so it's taking us out to sea go back in and we'll drift back out but we're gonna go a little shallower this time last time we stopped at like uh, 165 feet of water we're gonna stop at probably maybe 130 140 feet and then uh, drift out and see what happens Okay, the wind has changed direction. Uh, the wind is uh, going uh, north now, so my drift is north. So I came in shore about 150 feet. Uh, no action, because I was thinking I was gonna drift west, but now the wind picked up, pushing me north. So now I'm just cruising along at 150 feet, uh, not getting nothing. So we are gonna 
pack up. We're gonna head out there and then drift that way north. So we're probably gonna go south a little bit and out uh, 170, 175 feet and try it there. So packing up and heading out. What a mess. Today is not really turning out too good for me. This wind sucks. Gotta make sure I don't get this camera wet. think fishing's gonna happen today it's a little too breezy got the wind chop with the white water splashing all over the place not really digging all this it's kind of ruining my day tides turning around it's gonna start going out here Yeah, this isn't fishable. Too windy. It's gonna blow me off the uh, the drift. Yeah, this day is definitely turned around. Those uh, little two foot wind chop went from three foot to four foot to five foot, and now I think I have like a six foot chop. So we're getting out of here. It's kind of riding it in about 25 miles an hour. Yeah, it's more than a wind chop. It's more like a wind waves. Five to six feet. that's going to do it for this week's video uh, fishing was kind of a bust um, 
went out and did some halibut fishing and not even a bite and then the currents were started going fast the wind picked up so got out of there was trying to do some bottom fishing and then it got pretty crazy wind chop went from two foot to four foot to six foot i think the wind waves were probably like eight foot so i got pretty gnarly there on the way back but anyway thanks for watching appreciate it if you could please subscribe and also do a thumbs up and maybe some comments and again have a good one see you next time